Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Digital Home Thoughts, and this is my first video uh, in a little while. I've taken a bit of a break from doing videos. I'm back today and I'm looking at the Nikon Cool Pick. Coolpix S8100. So this is a, a point-and-shoot camera uh, from Nikon. Now, uh, I'll point out right off the top of my of the video, uh, I purchased this camera uh, from Nikon. I needed a camera to replace a couple of other cameras. What happened to my cameras? Well, if you remember the uh, video I did on the uh, the uh, Panasonic TS1, that little orange camera, uh, I had actually uh, accidentally slammed it in the car door. Yeah, good moving, good move, right? So that particular camera um, is destroyed, and then I had a small, um, uh, a small, just a cheap little Kodak camera uh, that my wife was using, and she accidentally dropped it and uh, basically uh, broke one of the buttons that got stuck, I disassembled it, couldn't get it to work. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. All that to say is that I needed a, a new camera to uh, use kind of, uh, you know, day to day and whatnot, and I decided to get the uh, Nikon Coolpix S8100. Now, I've never owned uh, a Nikon Coolpix camera before, and so uh, I was kind of interested, you know, to see what one would offer. Uh, Coolpix cameras, some of them get rated decently, and a lot of them don't. Um, Nikon uh, they kick ass when it comes to digital SLRs, uh, but when it comes to point-and-shoot cameras, uh, I frankly think they have a lot, a lot harder competition uh, from the likes of you know Panasonic and Canon and uh, other companies out there. So basically, what comes in the box? The usual stuff. We got some paperwork, a user manual. Uh, it comes with a Nikon View NX2 and then a user manual uh, on a CD. So I probably won't be using either one of these, but it's good that it at least comes with it. Um, and here is the actual camera itself. So it comes with a camera, comes with uh, an audio video um, cable. It's kind of a shame that you know HDMI isn't just standard. Like it's kind of it's kind of bad that we're still stuck with these little uh, composite cables. We have a, a hand strap here. We have a, a USB cable. We have a battery. And interestingly enough. That's it. Uh, oh, sorry. I take it back. There is ah, here we go. There's a, a a wall charger here. But here's what's kind of interesting. Let me just get the box out of the way. This wall charger is only for USB. So unlike most other point and shoot cameras uh, that you know you're on the market today, at least the ones I bought recently, uh, there's no actual wall charger, uh, or rather the wall charger charges the camera via USB. So what this means is, uh, for about the past, I guess, maybe year, two years, um, all Nikon Coolpix cameras have uh, recharged via USB. And so essentially when you want to recharge the battery, you take this, you plug this into this, and then you plug this into the camera. So um, it's, it's a little bit more work, you know, than uh, a regular kind of wall recharger. You can buy a wall recharger for this camera, uh, but it is an optional accessory. So I would have preferred to see, you know, kind of a regular, uh, a regular wall charger that I could just charge the battery with. But for whatever reason, Nikon decided not to do that. However, on the plus side, um, all you need to do is basically bring bring a cable with you because you, if you have like your laptop and you're traveling, you can just bring this with you and plug it in and away you go. Now, what would have been really fantastic if Nikon would have used a, a micro USB, but this is a, uh, or a mini USB plug rather. This looks like a completely uh, proprietary kind of customized um, plug, uh, which means that you need to have this exact cable. Nikon could have made this wonderful and amazingly easy on their users if they would have used the same type of cable that basically all most modern phones, uh, you know, connect with, but they didn't. They decided to go with this proprietary thing. So that's a bit unfortunate, but uh, there you go. What, what can you do? So, this is the Coolpix S8100. Now, it's red. Yes, that's right. I still have a thing for buying red cameras. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I, I like uh, the color red. So I like red laptops and netbooks and digital cameras. So down here, uh, we have the uh, battery. There's a uh, uh, an SD card slot that pops in right here. And then there's also an AV out. So this is where you would connect um, I guess an optional accessory cable because it didn't actually come with uh, a regular cable um, or it, rather it came with that uh, composite video cable and I'm going to assume that somewhere over here on the side yes yeah, so here's an HDMI port so Nikon will gladly sell you an HDMI cable but they won't give you one in the box and it of course is uh, it's a it's a, a mini uh, HDMI um, so you can't use the full-size cable and then uh, 
Well, this is a, this is actually kind of interesting. So I was assuming that I was going to see a power uh, connector somewhere on the outside, but it looks like the power connector for charging is 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 on the bottom. So that is um, this cable here. So that's kind of it's kind of weird that this is the only way to charge it, and you have to charge it from the bottom. So you can't actually leave the camera set up. You'd have to kind of lay it down flat on a surface, uh, you know, either screen down or screen up. So that's that's a little bit unusual, but uh, there you go. Now, let's talk about uh, the camera itself, you know, what, uh, what the camera can actually do. Let me just reposition the camera a little bit here. We'll zoom in so you can get a closer look at this very attractive um, camera. So uh, this camera, um, it's, it's basically, you know, kind of the new sort of uh, as, as thin as possible, but still have big zoom. So I have uh, the Panasonic uh, ZS3, uh, which is uh, very similar uh, to, to this uh, style of camera. Um, I think this one's probably a, a little bit slimmer, um, but it's definitely a, a little bit taller overall. So what makes this an interesting camera? So number one, um, you have a 10x um, optical zoom. It is I believe, I wrote it down here somewhere, yeah, a 30 millimeter to 300 millimeter kind of equivalent. So um, a little bit less wide angle than some cameras. Uh, there's some cameras, you know, from Panasonic and other brands that start in at, you know, 27 or even 24, you know, kind of millimeters. Um, this one starts at 30, so that means it gives you a little bit less wide angle, but 300 millimeter zoom equivalent is, is a lot of zoom, so it's pretty good at, at 10x. Not quite as good as my Panasonic ZS3, which has 12x, but 10x is not not bad at all. Now it has a 12.1 uh, megapixel uh, sensor, but it also it's also a backside illumination. So it, it's it's a backlit CMOS sensor. And that's a pretty big deal because um, a lot of cameras at this price point are CCD sensors, and CCD sensors uh, tend to generally they tend to generate noisier images depending on the type of sensor. And essentially, what this what this backlit sensor is supposed to do. Um, is it supposed to allow you to have a uh, better uh, low light um, functionality, you know, better better low light pictures? Uh, it does do full HD, so that is 1080p video, which is which is fantastic. That's an improvement over my Panasonic ZS3 because it only does uh, 720p video. So uh, big improvement there. And then of course in the back here we have a big screen. Now I'm not too sure if this is uh, powered or if, if, the, if the battery is charged rather. Uh, that's actually kind of funny. I don't even know if that is the power button. Oh, the power button's up here right where it says on off. Ha ha, go figure. Oh, there we go. So there's the screen. Uh, the screen looks screen looks really nice. Um, I'll set I'll set the time and date. Um, boy, I probably just sh should have said uh, no. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and put in some, uh, some bogus numbers here. Go back and fix it later. And then, bam, there we go. So here is the camera. So it has uh, a three inch uh, 920,000 pixel uh, sensor, 921,000 pixel sensor. So this is a, uh, sorry, I'm saying sensor, I mean screen. So it's a three inch screen, uh, 920K sensor. Uh, pretty standard now for, for most decent cameras, which is which is good to see. Uh, it has um, the macro mode. If you get into macro mode, I believe the specs, I'm just gonna double check on my little handy dandy spec sheet here. The focus range macro close up is uh, one centimeter. So you, I should be able to get super, super close uh, to this thing here. And bam, I'm able to uh, capture a picture. Now, a couple of other interesting things um, about the camera. So it is a, uh, it's a 12 megapixel sensor, 12.1 megapixels. Um, that's a little bit lower than some other cameras on the market, but uh, what really matters are the quality of the pixels, you know, and the actual, uh, the size of the sensor. This is still a point and shoot sensor. It doesn't have a particularly large sensor, uh, so it's not going to, uh, you know, it's not going to measure up to a micro four thirds camera or certainly not a digital SLR. But in terms of um, regular kind of point and shoot cameras, it should measure up quite well. Um, now, uh, it also has a vibration uh, reduction, which uh, kicks in automatically. Um, boy, I would love it if Nikon would take vibration reduction and put it in their digital SLR bodies and not just their little point and shoot cameras. It's kind of funny that you know I can spend a few hundred dollars on uh, on uh, on a point and shoot camera and get vibration reduction, but I can spend you know two grand on a Nikon body and uh, I don't get any vibration reduction until I spend you know another seven eight hundred thousand dollars on a lens. So anyway. That's just a little tiny rant there from uh, from me. So other important things. Um, 
I'm going to read this out because uh, I, I, I don't want to do it miss justice. Uh, it says, to capture moments that are gone in an instant, the Coolpix S8100 features both a high-speed shooting at five full, res five full resolution frames at up to 10 frames per second and a pre-shooting cache that records up to two shots before the shutter release is fully pressed. So, I obviously can't really demonstrate that here, but I'm going to assume that up here we have the, uh, we have the command dial and we have a few different uh, scene modes. And as you can see, as I toggle through this, it actually tells me uh, what version, uh, rather what um, what mode uh, it, it's actually in here. So this is this is a continuous shooting. So I'm just going to hold down the trigger here, or the shutter release, and uh, that's kind of funny. I was so, I was sort of expecting it to. Um, although you know, I don't have a memory card in here, and so it probably only has uh, it. It has some some small amount of uh, of uh, built-in memory. Yeah, so it, it it's actually it only holds uh, seven pictures there within the built-in memory. So I probably need a memory card to fully demonstrate that feature. But let me show you something else that's kind of cool here. Um, it has something called night landscape mode, and I'm gonna the night uh, night landscape mode. It says it combines a series of five consecutive shots taken at a fast shutter speed into a single image with reduced noise and cap when capturing handheld shots. So basically what that means is, uh, I don't know if it's actually going to work here, but uh, we're going to, we're going to, yeah, so of course that, that doesn't, that doesn't really work. I'm going to pause the camera here. I'm going to go get a memory card, which of course I should have had for this demo anyway. So yeah, hold on one second. All right, so I'm back and I have a uh, SanDisk Ultra card here. This is a 16 gig card. Now it is only a class four card. Uh, if you want to shoot 1080p video, you want to really want to go with a class six or preferably even a class 10. Class 10 cards are not too expensive uh, nowadays, so I would say definitely to just simply go with a uh, to go with go with the class 10 card. Now I want to point out something: uh, the sort of speed at which you can um, you know kind of turn it on and, and take a picture. So basically, I turned it on and, and took a picture. I'll measure it out, but I think that was probably only about one and a half seconds, if that. So as you can tell, it's uh, it's 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 quite quick. So I'm still in the uh, night. This is called the the night landscape mode. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to uh, snap a couple pictures. Now, uh, what's kind of interesting is that I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more. I'm a little bit confused about why, like. When I'm when I'm when I'm holding down uh, the shutter in this mode, I would kind of expect that uh, it would either take five frames at once, or it, or it would allow me to uh, continue to uh, hold this down. So that's a little uh, that's a little a little bit weird because of course it's only showing me that I have four pictures here, um, and I'll delete this current image. So yeah, I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit more. Another mode here, uh, which is kind of cool, this is the, uh, it's called the night, night portrait mode. And the way Nikon describes night portrait mode, it says it combines uh, consecutive shots of the background while the subject is taken using the flash. So basically, uh, and the flash actually pops up right over here in, in, in case you were curious. Um, and there, there's the flash. I'll show you how, what it looks like on the front. So it's a pretty little flash. It's, uh, it's pretty close to the body and so, I would say probably you're going to end up with a fair amount of red eye uh, when you're using this flash, but uh, it's it's kind of a given with point shoot cameras. Like let's let's face it, that's just kind of the way it goes. I'm going to go ahead here and uh, okay, interesting. Okay, so it 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 captured um, it captured a. A couple of different images, and then it essentially combined it into one. It's a little bit hard to see on the monitor, but um, this looks pretty good to me. Of course, you really need to test this out kind of at night uh, because that's that's basically the only way you'll get to know um, if an image like this actually works. Uh, there's uh, different images like this one. There's there's a subject tracking mode. There's uh, there's continual continuous shooting. So if I do this. I should be able to basically take uh, burst modes, and um, let me just go back here, and we'll see kind of what's on here. Yeah, so basically that one burst, it took uh, it took it took several pictures. Now it's kind of funky. Is that see how it's going from 
one of seven to six of seven. So within that one kind of image, there's there's actually five total images. So it took a burst of five images uh, when I held it down in that one that one spot. So that's actually pretty cool, and that's definitely good for uh, sports or kids or basically anything where you need to get a decent burst mode. This button right here is going to be, of course, for a video mode, and I'm not sure if it's if it's preset to 1080p. Yeah, I take it back. It is. It's right there. So basically, I would just hit that. And yeah, uh, it's recording 1080p. So as you can see here, on a 16 gig memory card, it gives me uh, just about uh, 29 full minutes of, of, uh, of HD video. You can zoom uh, while you are shooting video, but of course, there's gonna be a minimum fo focusing distance and uh, it, it doesn't have a macro mode in video, at least not as far as I can tell. I'm just gonna zoom in here a little bit more. Let me, uh, let me just stop the recording here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it, I'm going to force it in macro mode. I'll take it back. Macro mode's on. And if I hit video, uh, let's see if it has any sort of, uh, let's see if it actually has a macro mode. So it's attempting to focus, and the answer is no, it does not. So what that tells us is that the video mode uh, is not macro mode. It uses it uses the same uh, the same uh, minimum minimum focusing distance, which is probably going to be uh, somewhere in the yeah. It looks like it's one foot eight inches. So basically, you have to be about a foot. Uh, almost two feet away from whatever it is that you are shooting. Now, a couple of other things. It has a it has it has a self timer mode. Um, let me see here. Let's let's turn off macro mode. It has a self timer mode that, for some curious reason. Uh, it's not letting me activate. I'm gonna to have to figure this out. So this is the first Nikon point and shoot camera that I've ever had. Their menu system is uh, it's quite a bit different. Uh, from the menu system on a Nikon digital SLR. So I'm essentially completely uh, guessing for a lot of this stuff here. Uh, I, I'm into the exposure controls, and this is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to show up on here, but you can actually adjust the exposure. You can make it go bluer, or you can actually warm up the hue. So this is basically a hue control function. Uh, there's a vividness function. You can actually make it go up or down. There's a brightness, so you can actually manually uh, overexpose uh, the image and make it brighter. It's giving me a live histogram here, which is actually a really cool feature. I like that quite a bit. And down here, it gives me the exposure number. So if I want to go down by a full stop, or it uh, looks like it goes down uh, two stops down, and I'm guessing a maximum of two stops up. Yeah, so really nice feature. Not a, not a feature you typically find um, on a point-and-shoot camera. Uh, I can exit or I can reset. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically reset this back to uh, normal and then I'll go ahead and exit this. Now uh, I'm going to go into the menu here and we'll, we'll take a look at what's inside the menu. The image mode, it gives me um, a a couple, a couple of different options here. Um, these are all basically just resolution. It looks like it will shoot in a 16 by 9 mode, or you can force it into like like a VGA resolution. So it, it gives you a few different ones, you know, like PC resolution, whatnot. I'm not actually sure what the difference is between the star. Maybe the star is what it's actually set on. No, no. So there's a star uh, 12 megapixel mode and a regular mega 12 me megapixel mode. Boy, that's hard to spit up. So white balance. I can change it to a couple of uh, different things. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it on um, auto. It looks like I, where it says a preset manual. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. So what it, what it does is it actually allows you to uh, uh, you, you basically you take like a white piece of paper uh, and you take a picture. Uh, of it, and it should give you an accurate uh, white balance uh, measurement. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, metering. Uh, so yeah, center center weighted and matrix metering. This is essentially how the camera measures exposure. Uh, matrix. It looks at the whole image and it, and it gives you um, an average exposure. And center weighted. It basically, whatever's whatever's in the center or whatever you're kind of actually focusing on or shooting at, that is what would be um, exposed properly. Most of the time, you want to leave it in matrix. If you have trouble, uh, like. Uh, tricky situations you can you want you want to use a spot metering well or in this case center weighted what would have been cool is if they would have had spot metering but that's something that's I'm, I'm used to seeing on a digital SLR now these are the uh, con continual shooting modes so it's a continual shooting I'm assuming a high speed a low speed uh, pre shooting cache so that's actually kind of cool uh, that is when you 
um, before you even press the trigger, it's actually going to be taking a couple images. The Sport Continuous, um, let me just describe what Sport Continuous is because I, I did a little printout that had the actual um, information. It says, Sport's Continuous Mode records approximately 120 frames per second with subject tracking. The S8100 automatically tracks a designated, designated subject by activating autofocus. So, if I go in here to Sport's Continuous, um, and I do this now. Of course, yeah. This is well. This is kind of dumb. This is this is not a this is not a good way for me to demo this feature. So right now it's it's, it's recording 120 frames, or rather, maybe it's processing 120 frames. Um, it looks like when you use this feature, you have to be prepared to wait a little while. So that's certainly yeah, that's certainly a factor. Uh, so here it is. Here's here's my my continual uh, image, and it looks like oh yeah, this is actually kind of cool. So as you can see here, uh, I'm going through all the images, and you can see that my hand is slowly going to start to move out of the way. Uh, Okay, I take it back. I thought it was moving. I can see the camera moving a little bit. So I'm actually a little bit confused about what I'm seeing here. So as you can tell, I really need to figure this out. What is important to note <laughs> is that it's only one megapixel when it's in sport continual. So, you know, you're not, you're not going to be blowing that up to poster size. One megapixel, basically a four by six would, you could do a four by six, but that would be slightly stretching it. So yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, BSS. You know, I actually don't know what the heck that feature is. Uh, maybe some sort of like best shot mode, and then multi shot uh, 16. Uh, that's that's actually kind of cool. So let me move over here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm I'm, I'm actually just gonna get, going to take a picture uh, of my office. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is multi shot 16. Um, let me just flip that on here. So what it does is it actually takes uh, basically 16 images at once, which is uh, which is pretty funky. Uh, Multi-shot 16 would be like, I don't know, if there's something happening in front of you and you wanted to get like a funky shot of sort of like a series of actions kind of all put together, you would use multi-shot uh, 16. So that's actually, it's kind of fun, but it's certainly not something that you're, you're gonna use, um, you're not gonna use it all the time, right? Now, uh, let me see here. Oh, this is playback menu. I'm gonna go back into the menu here and we'll just see if there's anything else that's kind of really interesting. I'm gonna put the continuous shot back to the uh, high level ISO sensitivity. Um, you can leave it at auto or there's fixed, fixed range auto, which is kind of interesting because it looks like it looks like the ISO is limited to, um, or fixed range auto, it's a maximum of ISO 400. Remember, the higher the ISO, the more noise is in your image. The ISO goes all the way up to 3200, which means that you can take pictures in, in a fairly low light, but ISO 3200 on a point and shoot camera like this with a little tiny sensor, pretty much it's gonna look bad. So. You probably just want to leave it on auto. Um, right now, it, it defaults to face priority, so it looks like there's a couple different things. Like you can set it manually, and then I'm going to assume that uh, I can maybe modify. Yeah, so I can actually modify the focus point. So this is if you're, um, you know, composing a shot. Maybe you're on a tripod and you have the luxury of of moving your focus point around to really kind of capture exactly what you want to capture. Nine times out of ten, though, if you're just using this in day to day use, you want to leave it on auto or on uh, or on face priority, right? Now uh, we're going to go into movie options here. So we have a couple different movie options. We have a 1080p, uh, 1080p with a star. Got to look up what that star is. Not really too sure. We have a 720p option VGA and a QVGA. Most of the time, you're going to want to capture 1080p, you know, so ma maximum quality. Um, it looks like autofocus. Uh, looks like you can you can do uh, full time autofocus or single autofocus. So I'm going to assume that full time autofocus means that it's going to focus track while it is shooting uh, the video. So you're going to want to go ahead and uh, I I don't know. I'm going to have to do some testing. I'm going to assume that the default to single autofocus is maybe the smarter one, but I I kind of like full-time autofocus, so I'm going to leave it on that. And then wind noise reduction will be if you're outside. Um, the two microphones are actually right up here. It's kind of interesting that they're so close together. Um, on the other hand, though, they're not in a place where you would normally put your fingers, uh, which is pretty good. So if you're outside, you want to put on noise wind reduction. If not, you just want to basically leave it off. And then uh, that looks like that's that looks like that's about it. Um, oh, there's motion detection. That's kind of cool. I kind of wonder what what motion detection is. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Vibration reduction is, of course, put on automatically. Uh, digital zoom, uh, I'm going to turn that off because you really only want to use optical zoom. If you need to do anything 
else you can crop your picture after the fact. Um, yeah, so let me just see here. Uh, movie options, uh, continual. You know what's kind of interesting is that I'm not seeing. So yeah, this so this uh, this camera does not shoot in raw because if I was if if it was seeing that you would actually see some um, image. Uh, options. Although what's kind of interesting is usually I would see something in here in the image mode that would relate to the JPEG compression. You know, usually like fine or or uh, normal JPEG compression, and and uh, I'm I'm actually not seeing anything here uh, related to the JPEG compression. So Nikon looks like maybe they just went with the default. I don't actually think that's a bad thing because I think that uh, there's a lot of people that they uh, they set their JPEG compression to the mat like the minimum, meaning the highest quality image possible. They get a lot less photos on their on their memory card, but uh, unless they're blowing it up to like a wall size print, they would probably never see the compression artifacts. Uh, the difference between the full and the uh, normal. So anyway, I think that is about it. Let me just turn it off here so you can kind of take another look at it. Um, I'm just going to check my uh, paperwork to see if I kind of forgot anything. No, I, I think I think that's really about it. I mean, I went over most of the specs. Uh, the lowest ISO it shoots at is ISO 160. Uh, and then, of course, the highest ISO it shoots at is um, uh, 3200. Um, battery life is approximately 210 shots with this battery. It is a pretty small battery, so I'll be interested to see if, if I feel like I'm recharging this thing um, constantly. 12.1 megapixel sensor. Uh, it, of course, has the, the 10x Nikkor um, zoom. Um, it uses um, SDHC or SDXC memory cards. It also uses regular SD cards. So basically, any SD card on the market, regardless of how gigantic it is right now, it will actually use, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, the camera is uh, 7.4 ounces. That's uh, 209 grams. Uh, to me, it, it, it feels quite light. And uh, I, I like the fact that even though it's a 10x zoom, it doesn't really bump out that much. So I'm feeling like this is probably going to be a, a fairly pocket-friendly camera overall. I of course really like the, uh, the it, it's sort of like a soft satiny finish. I really like the finish. I, I think I think it's uh, it's quite attractive and it feels nice and, and uh, smooth to the touch. What you should always do of course when you buy a new camera is take off the stickers. Uh, don't be one of those complete dorks that leaves um, their sticker on the camera. Uh, you, you just you don't want to be that guy. Don't be uh, don't be camera sticker guy. So this has been Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts with what is uh, uh, a really long video. Yeah, I didn't mean for this to be 25, 26 minutes long, but I guess I had a lot to say about the Nikon S8100. So if you're interested in purchasing your own, uh, please check out the video description. Don't ask me how much it is. Check out the video description and you'll find out how much it is there. The reason why is that prices are changing constantly. And if I tell you one price in this video, it's gonna change and it's gonna be a completely different price. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post them. Please do not ask me if you should buy this camera. If you've watched this video, you should know whether or not you should buy this camera. It's your money. You always want to make your own decisions about what you should purchase. So please, please, please do not ask me which camera you should buy. Do not ask me if you should buy this camera, etc., etc. Do your own research. Figure out what the best camera the is for your needs. Thanks for and watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.